Hey everyone, Reese here with Cranberry Alarm RI3D. Um, today we got a video uh, demonstrating our intaking method. Um, we're using our hopper right here. Um, we've kind of finalized it with our handoff system and everything. Um, and so far we've got some good results and we'll be happy to show you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. So um, I guess a little bit of insight to why we went with this design uh, archetype. Um, we knew that we kind of wanted to simplify a lot of the things on the robot. We knew that ground intake was going to be really difficult this year. Um, and with the presence of two human feeder stations and 60 total coral behind them, we thought it would be wise to build a robot around um, with a ramp that can pass through. And then the added benefit of this is that you, when you're scoring on the reef and going to the human player station, you really never have to turn around. Um, if you're staying at the same human player station. Um, so this could lead to some really effective and fast scoring if you can really optimize going back and forth. Um, uh, a little bit more specifics kind of on the hopper and what we have. Um, this back opening right here is spanning about 21 inches. The, this edge right here is going to be 31 inches off the ground um, compared to the 37.5 coming from the uh, feeder station. We knew we wanted to be a little bit lower than that. Um, and the large driving force was that was being able to catch coral um, if there's a coral in the way. A lot of times there's going to be mistakes in match. Things are going to get in your way. Um, and we wanted to be able to catch coral um, with a lot of variability. Uh, <clears throat> our slope right here is currently was designed at 12 and a half, but reality got us to 14 degrees. Um, and then our gap that we have right here is spanning six inches. Um, we noticed that uh, there wasn't these slopes right here. Um, and we noticed that it was a little tight and uh, the game piece would kind of like come in here and it would catch right there and it would stop. So by opening that up, it kind of allowed us to come in here and then the game piece may bounce around here and when it hits here, it does a good job of redirecting it into the wheels right here. One other thing that we really noticed is that um, we didn't have a bunch of two inch squishy wheels on this uh, roller right here. We actually kind of had them spaced out and we knew that the game piece kind of had the ability to seat itself in between uh, the wheels and not make contact. So we went ahead and ran uh, full length rollers here so that we could have contact with with the coral at any point. Um, one other thing that we were really uncertain about and got uh, really lucky on that worked out really well for us is um, the handoff stage right here. So you can see we actually are running about a four inch gap um, from this edge here to the edge of the end effector. Um, and this was done because of our um, elevator and because you can't have anything in this space um, to be able to bring the elevator all the way up. And so far, this has worked really well. We actually dropped this edge. Um, if you were to draw the infinite line, infinite plane of this, we dropped the plane of the end effector about half an inch below that um, to go and help make that drop go effectively. For the most part, um, the coral is pretty straight coming out of this, so that worked out really well for us. So yeah, with all that said, let's go ahead and just jump in and do some quick tests and show you what this works. And so you can see it bounces around just a tiny bit, but then it grabs it pretty well. And we're running at a pretty slow speed just because we found out that kind of works well for us. We'll do a, a dem couple demonstrations with some, some greater speeds. Um, yeah, so now that we that it works really well on center. So let's go ahead and shift it left to right and kind of see what, how it looks when it, you're maybe off center a little bit. Don't get it quite right. Or human player drops it down the wrong chute or some sort. So this period right here where you're waiting for the game piece, um, I imagine the robot may be able to just drive away during this, game, this period. Um, but they may have to just wait. Um, that's something we'll learn more as we begin doing full cycle testing. Awesome. We'll do one side from the right, a couple times from the right. And those two inch squishy wheels do a really good job of bringing it in. Uh, let's go ahead and demonstrate uh, horizontal rolling to kind of show how that has an effect on the, uh, out, the intake. So sometimes it'll come in pretty well. 
Looks like we're doing a pretty good job there. Not nearly as well as the vertical rolling. There, we got a good one. That was an accidental drop that it still did a good job with. Yeah, so let's go ahead and now, um, let's drop a coral in here. Um, kind of see how that has an effect on our intaking. So that is with just a human player drop. Um, we'll do a couple where we do the uh, human player throws it and human player drops it. So let's do a couple more drops. So we do our, we are bouncing around significantly more. I'm gonna bet that uh, with a little bit of variability that the field has, um, this may not fully work. Let's go and see what the human player does when they throw it. Give it a good push. So that has a little bit more of a better chance of success for us. Uh, let's do, let's uh, move it to the side a little bit. So it still bounces around significantly, but you know, after a short second, it settles itself and does a good job of finding its way into the end effector. So here's some horizontal rollers with us uh, still being offset. So overall, we are really pleased with this. Let's do, um, you wanna do a couple more tests with some high speed? So we're on, running at a pretty low speed here, probably around 25 to 30%. What's going up it? Looks like we're right around 60, 65% right now. So this is one reason why we also run at a slower speed is that helps kind of with our consistency. Um, so yeah, let's do a couple more at high speed, just kind of show the consistency of it. Go ahead and move this away. Let's go and push it up against there. Go ahead. Let's do offset. Yeah, go ahead. We're gonna call it. That's good. One more. So overall. We're pretty happy with how this came out. We made a lot of assumptions with the handoff that ended up paying off really well for us. So um, we're gonna continue moving forward with this and hopefully get some good videos of cycle testing and hopefully finish out the rest of the wiring of the robot and get moving soon. Uh, thank you guys for watching and check out more videos of Cranberry Alarm RA3D on Fun Robotics Network. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.